Now as you can see right here, this is how tall my antenna is compared to me coming out of my truck. Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner, Tanner, tech, Tanner, tech, Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Hello, this is Tanner Tech, KM6JEY. And today I'm going to be showing you how to build this antenna or dipole that I have right behind me. Now I did another video about how to build a dipole uh, a little while ago. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build this portable one that can be set up in about 10 minutes. And it's pretty cool. So, let's get started. The first thing you're going to need for this dipole is one of these pieces of steel rod with a beveled end. Now, what this allows you to do is you can get a lot of these together and you can stick them inside each other. So that way you can build a pretty tall antenna. So what I've done is I've used this to build my antenna to a height of about 20 feet. Now, as you can see right here, I've used these ratchet straps to secure this bottom pole of my antenna to my tire. Now, my tire has rubber on here, which keeps this pole from slipping when it moves back and forth and sways in the wind. So, even though this antenna is super tall and only held on by two ratchet straps holding it to this tire, the friction of this uh, metal pole and this rubber tire keeps it straight and makes it so it doesn't sway or fall over. The first ratchet strap is down there. And as you move up, the second ratchet strap is going across the top right here. And it makes it a relatively stable antenna. Now if we move up the line here, we can see that it eventually reaches this top about 10-15 feet in the air. Now, this is how you make the top, and this is what the top looks like closer. So here's the closer image. As you can see, this is the top of the pipe, or where the antenna is connected. As you can see, the coaxial cable comes up here, and it is zip-tied to this piece of plexiglass. This piece of plexiglass was bent into this little angle and it was screwed onto the metal piece of pipe via a hole drilled inside and a screw and a nut on the other side. Now what happens is I made these little indentations with my uh, grinder inside the plexiglass so that way the wires can hang out like this and have a place to rest when they come out. As you can see on the end of the coaxial cable I have this uh, connector, this coax connector and on it I have a wire soldered to the positive or hot end and then one going from ground out. As you can see these are wires, these are about 14 gauge wires that are coming out multi-stranded and these are the antenna wires. Now at the end of the antenna wires are these little uh, crampon clamps and these are tied to a piece of green string and these go down to my two anchors to make sure the two ends of the dipole are sticking outwards. I'm using one of these little pieces of pipe for each anchor on the other end of the green string so that way it holds the piece of uh, string out and it holds the dipole out. Now as you can see right here, this is how tall my antenna is compared to me coming out of my truck. It goes all the way up here. So from my radio over here, I have the coax that goes up to that little part on the antenna that I just showed you. Now this piece of coax goes up to the antenna and I can plug it into my radio or the antenna tester. But let's try the antenna tester first. As you can see when I turn it on and I tune it to the right value, which is going to be 28.385, you can see the SWR is about 1.2. It's not the best, but it's pretty good. This antenna isn't perfectly matched. If I tune it down more, I can get the SWR to 1 at about 27.461, which I can still do on this radio. It's just uh, not the band I want to, not the frequency I want to transmit on. So this is a pretty cool little SWR meter. And if I tune it to the one that I'm going to be transmitting on, 28385, I can get a relatively good uh, SWR. Now to power this ham radio, I have two of these alligator clip wires going to these two wires over here. Those two wires from my uh, radio go through here and they go into the two terminals of my car battery. So that way I can power my radio from a relatively stable voltage source. As you can see, that is my whole entire ham radio setup. Up here, we have the antenna with a piece of pole and then the two dipole lines coming out. We have the coax coming down into my car and we have the wire from my radio going through my car into the battery. So this is my ham radio setup for field day. Now field day and ham radio is when we all come to a place, all the people that do ham radio in a certain area, and we set up our ham radio stations and we try to contact people. Now this is my little ham radio station based out of my truck and it's pretty cool because I'm able to 
build this antenna in about uh, 10 to 15 minutes, which is pretty good for emergency situations. So let's say I was in an emergency and I needed to contact somebody. Now, let's say cell phones didn't work and all the power was out. I could set up this station, which is off the grid, and I could contact various people from far away. And it would be very good for emergency situations. That is what field day in ham radio is meant for. So that way, if there's an emergency, you can prepare for that emergency and be able to contact other people when cell phones and other means of communication are not functional. So now let's make some good contacts on this uh, radio. 10 meter radio, 28385. See who I can call. CQ, CQ, this is KM6JEY. Anybody out there? So I didn't get any footage of making contacts on the 10 meter band, and that's because it didn't work too well. Now, the 10 meter band is not exactly very active right now because we're at the low point of the sunspot cycle. And when there's lots of sunspots, that means we have very good transmission of the 10 meter band. It means we can bounce it easier off the atmosphere. We can bounce the radio signal off the atmosphere to places far around the world. But now, because we're in a low sunspot cycle, then there's not very many sunspots and we can't bounce the signal very far. So I wasn't able to hear anybody on the 10 meter radio. But I was able to go on somebody else's 40 meter radio and make quite a few contacts, even a few in Alaska and Hawaii, which is pretty cool. So as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video. Now my next video should be pretty cool because I recently taught an electronics class at my school and I videoed these electronics classes. So if you want to learn more about electricity and you weren't able to attend my electronics class, you can watch the video of it. So, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.